evening class, welcome back. We're gonna get started here. What I have done already and what you might wanna do if you have some paper available is I've made two, <clears throat> excuse me, two um, two inch square little cutouts. So this is two inches, this is two inches, this is two inches, this is two inches, ish. It doesn't, those should be exactly the same, right? If they're both two inches. But you get the idea, they should be Pretty similar. Actually, I'm going to measure and see. While you're cutting yours out, I'm going to go ahead and measure and see kind of where, where I went awry here. Yep, that looks good. That looks good. So this one's maybe too small on one side. That looks good. Yeah, this one's a little bit small. I'm just going to cut a new one. That's what I say. So go ahead and get your two two inch squares, please. Cut those guys out. So there's that. This is two inches. And then I'm gonna make two inches over here. And I'm just going from eight to 10 because I know that eight plus two is 10. So I know that that is two inches. That's what I'm getting at. Okay. So now I officially have, <gasps> two two inch square pieces. What you'll also need is some string. I don't exactly have string, but I do have this super fancy ribbon that I'm gonna use. So if you have some lying around, great. If you don't, you just go with what I have. All right? Okay, so we have our two little fellas. Now, before this, if we were in class together, what we would do is we would make a little design on one side of this. So I want you to do that. I want you to make any sort of design that you like, so long as it's in one line. For example, if you do this, that's not gonna work, okay? Oh, you cannot see that. Let me turn off this light and see if that works. There we go, okay? But if you do something like this, that would work. Does that make sense? So on one of yours, from one corner, from top corner to bottom corner, just make any kind of design you'd like. So I'm gonna do like a this, a that, some rolling waves, maybe a sharp line, and then just bring it back down to the corner. It almost looks like a face, like a, somebody with a big, a big top lip. Doesn't that look kind of like that? I wonder what yours looks like. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut this out. We're going to make something called a tessellation. So cut that part out. I'm going to do the same. Hopefully I can cut this out. It's so tiny. And I have to be so careful. Beep. Have you ever heard of tessellations before? Maybe you've worked with them in the past. Maybe you've even done some tessellation art, which is really fun. I have, but only since I started teaching third grade. I wish I'd known about it before. Okay, so here we have our two pieces, okay? So a tessellation is when you take this piece that fits in perfectly here, you put it on the other side, then you trace it, and then you can put this piece over and over and over and over and over again, right, to make a pattern. So if I had another one of these, it would fit in perfectly right here or on this side, right? Okay, so we have that. Now, let's get back to the problem set. Let's first start by reading the bottom. Will you read with me, please? Decompose quadrilaterals to understand perimeter as the boundary of a shape. I know you all have heard of perimeter before, but we're going to go in a little bit more, a little more in depth today. So let's read up here. The first instruction says, read with me, use a two inch square to answer the questions below. So A says, trace the square in the space below with a red crayon. Well, I'm fresh out of red crayons, but I am going to use my red marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and, tr oops, and trace my square. 
Now, what you could do if you only did one of these, right, if you only cut one square, you could just put this back together and trace it that way. That would be fine. But since I have this square that I haven't cut, I'm just going to use this. Okay. There we go. Done. Trace a square in the space below with a red crayon. Check. Okay. Now let's go to B. Please read with me. Trace the new shape you made, this guy, with the square in the space below with a red crayon. Okay, again, I'm not going to use a crayon, but I am going to use my marker and I'm going to trace around this. Okay, so you please do the same. If you haven't done this, just watch what I'm doing. Okay, no worries. If you didn't, weren't able to get a little square and join me, no problemo. Just do a little bit of tracity tracing. Oops. There we go. Oh goodness. Maybe this would be easier with a crayon. Okay. Okay. There's my new shape. The new shape I created. There it is. Looks pretty cool, actually. So now let's read number C letter C <laughs> together. It says, which shape has a greater perimeter? How do you know? This is where your string is going to come in handy. And maybe even handier if you have a better string than I have. But this is when you're going to go around. So first I'm going to go around my, um, my square. Go around, go around. I'm kind of folding the ribbon so that it actually will stay on the sides there and there and I'm gonna mark it I'm gonna take my red and I'm gonna mark the point where the square was so I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put an S right here square Oops. okay now my task is to <laughs> follow around this one with my string or my ribbon in my case. So now I need to follow this perimeter and see which is longer. So what, where's my, I'm just going to make a note of where my, um, so my square line is here. And now I'm going to follow around, kind of goes down this way, over here, over here around like that, and like that, and like that. Hopefully I have a better string than me. This string is not the ideal one, that's for sure. Go this way, up here, over here, around. And do you see how I'm not keeping it around perfectly where I've already measured? Because base, let's just be honest, it's impossible with this ribbon. And I feel pretty confident that I'm keeping it in place enough that I know how far around it is rather than having to keep it exactly in place. And if we're not exact, that's gonna be okay because we're going to be able to know. So I'm gonna put a T for tessellation right here. I put an S for square. Now I'm gonna look at my line. Here's my square, here's my tessellation. And you can clearly see which one is greater, right? So, now we can answer the question. I have glitter all over my paper now, and it'll be all over me, but that's okay. I'm rocking it, nothing wrong with a little bit of glitter. What shape has a greater per perimeter? How do you know? I'm going to say the second shape has 
has a greater perimeter. And then I'm going to write when I measured with my ribbon, the second shape. Actually, let's say the second shape's mark was further down the ribbon. And that's how I know. Let's read D together. It says color the inside of the shapes in problem 1A and problem B, 1A and B, with a blue crayon. Again, I don't, I don't have the luxury of a blue crayon right now, so I'm just going to use my blue marker, and I'm not going to do a beautiful job. I'm just going to kind of do like this, just a little scribbly scrib. I'm still staying inside the lines. And this one. <laughs> Got a little glitter in there for flair. So nice. Not bad, not bad. This one looks like maybe a state, shape of a state or something. <laughs> okay, let's flip a rooski. Will you please read E with me? Which color represents the perimeter of the shape? How do you know? So we have two colors here, right? We have the blue on the inside and we have the red on the outside. Which one represents the perimeter and how do you know? Okay, so let's answer. Which one is it? Is it red or is it blue? If you said red, yes, you're so right. So let's say red represents The perimeters because I traced the boundary or the outside right of the shapes with red and the boundary Is the perimeter. Boop. Awesome. I bet I can figure out what F is going to ask. Let's read it together. What does the other cup the other color represent? How do you know? Blue represents yes, blue represents area. Absolutely. We've done, we did so much work on area, so we know that so well. So let's write blue represents the area because it shows how much space the shape takes up. Awesome. Okay. Let's read G. Read with me, please. Which shape has a greater area? How do you know? Hmm. So I'm going to compare my two. Uh oh, lose a little piece of mine. Where's my other piece? Ooh la la. Oh, here it is. Fell on the floor. Okay, so if I have this piece right here and I have this piece right here, what? which one has a greater area? What do you think? This one has a greater area. This one has a bigger perimeter, so does that mean it also has a greater area? Remember, if we were to move this back and put it how it was originally, these would be exactly the same, right? 
So do you think that moving this over here changes the area? You're right, trust your gut. It doesn't, it doesn't change the area. So we can write, we can write neither shape. has a greater area. We can say they have the same area. Because I just changed how the square looks. which does not change the area. Just like that. Isn't that interesting that it changes the perimeter but not the area? The, area, the perimeter got larger, but the area stayed the same. Hmm. Okay, let us move on. 2A, read it with me, says, Outline the perimeter of the shapes below with a red crayon. Okay. Consider it done. Perimeter. A square. A triangle. And a parallelogram. Okay, let's read B together to B. It says, explain how you know you outline the perimeters of the shape above. Well, let's say I know I outlined the perimeters. What is that? <laughs> perimeters because I outlined the boundary of each shape and the boundary is the same as the perimeter. And the boundary is the same as the perimeter. Ding, ding, ding. Awesome. All right, let's read the last one. It says, number three says, outline the perimeter of this piece of paper with a highlighter. Okie dokie. And my little yellow highlighter here. I'll just go ahead and outline the perimeter and the desk a little bit. It's fine. It's totally fine. Oops. So if you want, you could take this a little further. And if you have made a shape, you can get a separate piece of paper and make a tessellation drawing. And I will show you how to do that. So if you made your little tessellation like this, take your tessellation and outline it like so. Oh my goodness. And then what you can do, I'm just gonna have those little two, is you can move this up. Look at that. It fits exactly. And then you draw a second one. Right? You trace it. And a third and a fourth. And you can go 
So not only can you go this way, but you can, you can make one right here, right? And guess what? This guy is going to fit right there. Isn't that cool? So it's kind of fun if you want to do that. That's going to be your challenge. And that's it, y'all. Great job today. I will catch you on the flip.